the stirring that you are feeling, says the Lord, is of me. For I am beginning to draw my people back unto me. I have sat and watched the affairs of men for a generation, but I am standing now, says the Lord, and I'm beginning to draw those that have been hungry unto me, for there is a divine reunion, saith God, that is getting ready to take place now before my bride and myself, and the brokenness that is in you, says the Lord, that I allowed to come, it was to take out of you things to make room for the glory of the Lord that is being released by the Spirit of God and I say that I am healing thee saith the Lord and even in this conference saith God I am loosening river of divine healing in this building even in the natural saith the Lord that's coming but God said this is a healing of your spirits this is a healing of your souls for the enemy stole the shout saith God out of the mouth of my people and she was silent while the enemy raised in the world said is there even a God but the sound of praise saith the Lord is building in the bosom of my people and all this year there shall be a sound begin to go forth out of the realm of the spirit that will put fear in the hearts of the enemy and that which the enemy stole from you saith the Lord I have issued a command out of heaven that what the enemy stole from you I am declaring that not only must he give it back but he's going to give it back with interest saith the Lord for I will not allow my people to be released from the things that the enemy has said we could not be released from so this day saith God I declare unto you that this is a different hour and though the prophetic has gone forth over the last few years there is a sound saith God I have drawn my sword in the spirit and I am going to march through the end enemy's camp and this is not a battle that you will fight saith the Lord for while I am fighting for you saith God your healing will begin to take place I'm allowing you to reciprocate back into the enemy what he did to you for my people are not going to be weak they will not be maligned the world will not stand at them and mock for I'm declaring an end to this mocking spirit that has risen up against the house of the Lord and the mouth of the wicked that has challenged me saith God I accept your challenge I declare saith the Lord that this is the hour of the church that out of your belly shall begin to flow rivers of living water for I did not allow my word to return unto me void but what I have declared I will also perform so raise your hands in your spirit and declare if God before me nobody can be against me saith God welcome to the fresh fire conference night number two day number two would you remain standing with me? And I want to welcome our online listeners and watchers. We have people from all over the planet watching this fresh fire. And Father God, we thank you for the fresh fire of Almighty God. We say, Lord, pour out your spirit, pour out your glory, pour out your power. Your presence is here. And Lord, we decree a mighty outpouring of the Spirit of God. Signs, wonders, miracles, working some miracles, Lord. Salvations, deliverances, Lord. We say, let the Word of God go forth in power, and it shall not return unto you void, but it will accomplish what you send it to accomplish in this service and in this conference. And I thank you, Lord, for the fire of Almighty God and the glory of God and the Word of God and the Spirit of God and the Word and Spirit agree and we see God do great things. In Jesus' name, we declare it and we decree it. Amen. Come on, church, and give it up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Oh, He's worthy. Put your hands together.
Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, 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 yeah. Oh. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burn it with the Holy Ghost. Well, I wish somebody so catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burn it with the Holy Ghost. The day of Pentecost was full become. We were all in one place, we were all in one accord. And suddenly there came a sound like a rushing mighty wind. It filled the house where they were sitting. Oh, I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burning with the Holy Ghost. We're feeling the Spirit, cloven tongues, just like fire. Shut up in their bones, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Spoke in other tongues as he gave utterance. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire. Come on, catch on fire, catch on fire. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire. Hey, burn it with the Holy Ghost. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, burn it with the Holy Ghost. My soul is burning, burning. I know it's burning, burning. I feel it burning, burning. With the Holy Ghost, my soul is burning, burning. Deep in the burning, my soul is burning. With the Holy Ghost, my soul is burning. My soul is burning. I feel it burning. With the Holy Ghost, my soul is burning. I know it's burning. Oh, my soul is burning. With the Holy Ghost,
you say, oh, great is thy oh, Jesus.
your prayer. Come on, read the name. Spirit of God, break out on us. Bring revival. Spirit of God, break out on us. Bring revival. Come on and give the Lord some praise. He's worthy. Come on, church. Lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, church. Man, you won't find better worship than that anywhere, I tell you. God is so faithful. You can be seated and, and prepare your offerings. I was, I was praying today and I've just been digging in and, and all that God has been speaking to us prophetically and, and, and these great words and these great preachers that have come before us. And I've just kind of just been rolling over in my spirit what they've been, been talking to us about. And I felt like the Lord showed me and it was a deer and he, and he was dropping his antlers. When a, uh, when, a, when a certain season comes, a deer will drop its antlers no matter how, how big and how beautiful and how wonderful they are. They'll drop their antlers because the season is changing and they have served their purpose. And, and as good as they are, they have to make room for what is new and for what is coming. And I feel like the Lord says that some of you have been looking back and saying, Lord, look what the enemy killed. Lord, look, look what the enemy's done over here. And God's saying, sons and daughters, it wasn't the enemy. God said, I had to let your good die to make room for the best that I am bringing in. This has been a season where God has been rebuilding storehouses. Uh, God spoke to the rich man. He went to the rich man and he said, you have said, look at my good harvest. I'll go and I'll rebuild my storehouses and I'll make them bigger and I'll bring in this good harvest and then I can rest and be easy. And God says, you fool, who have you stored these things up for? When a, a, a wicked man will rebuild his storehouses, but for a righteous man, God will rebuild their storehouses. And in this season, God has been rebuilding your storehouses. And, and he already answered his question in, in Proverbs. He said, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And so in this changing of seasons, God is bringing upon you blessing and increase and promotion, but he had to sow your good as a seed to make room and the storehouse to bring forth the harvest of the best. Amen. There's a verse and, and, and my mother will always quote this. I heard this so much growing up and it says, listen carefully, unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world, it is never any more than a grain of wheat. But if it is buried, it sprouts and reproduces itself many times over. Amen. Some of y'all have been sown seeds for decades. And just now, if you'll look out into your field, they're just now coming forth. Hallelujah. Um, ushers, you can, can get, get ready to serve the, serve the people and I just want to. I just want to say too, uh, when we give, uh, Tony Tony Suarez says today, hope is hope is good. But he said what Christians need to have is expectation because as we are giving, even though what we are sowing it dies a little death, we are bearing a seed, but we have the expectation of a great harvest ahead of us. And so as you give today, give joyfully, knowing that we are sowing a seed and that a great harvest is at our feet. If you'll bow your head, we'll pray over the offering. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much. God, I honor your presence that is already in this place. And Lord Jesus, I thank you, God, that the heavens, Lord, are heavy. Lord, with the harvest and with the blessing of God. Lord, that is just beginning to be poured out on your people. God, we are just beginning to taste it and to see it. Lord, I pray that you would bless your people who have sowed so faithfully. God, as we sow tonight, Lord, that you would bring a hundredfold harvest from what is sowed, Lord. And God, that we would see quickly, God, even as, that we, as we are giving, Lord Jesus, that the good report and the testimony are on the way. Lord, we honor you for what you do here tonight. In Jesus' name, ushers, you may serve the people.
Bible says, if we are buried with him in the likeness of his death, we shall also be raised with him in the likeness of his resurrection. So today we declare that the spirit of death on this building is broken in the name of the Lord. We declare that the sickness that's in your body today is broken in the name of the Lord. I declare bankruptcy broken in the name of the Lord. We declare, hallelujah, that oppression is broken in the name of the Lord. We declare that the anointing of God breaks every yoke that is trying to bind you up, that out of your belly shall begin to flow rivers of living water. Lord, we just declare in the name of Jesus, God, as we set this cross today, Lord, we declare that this area belongs to the kingdom of God. Lord, I praise you for this landmark moment. And God, we declare, Lord, that as this cross stands over this city, so does the divine protection of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we thank you for our building. We thank you, Lord, for this cross. We thank you, Lord, for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God, we rest in your word today. We rest in this sovereign miracle. In Jesus' name, amen. miracle. We're so excited about what God is doing in our new building. We're just so excited. So I just, I, I just want to show you something so fun. Uh, we have guests here from Douglasville, Georgia, Brother Charles Rogers and his wife, Emma Jean. And they are right here on the front row, and they brought a wonderful contribution to Destination Miracle all the way from Georgia. He's 91 years old. And so I, I would like to give you a personal gift. Would you allow me to do that? This is the address of Destination Miracle, and it's 709 Rivergate Parkway. Would you please give them a wonderful hand? God bless you, sir. We honor you. We honor you, sir. Imogene, we honor you. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. Very, very honored to, to have you here. So I just want to tell you tonight, before we get into uh, where you're from tonight, if you could help me welcome Australia, Canada, France, Germany, New Zealand, South Africa, United Kingdom, Sweden, Sweden, Netherlands, Spain, Ireland, Finland, Dominican Republic, Belgium, Austria, India, and yes, again, Arkansas. <laughs> So we love, we love our online family. We honor you uh, for being with us. We also have Corpus Christi, Texas, Ohio, Michigan, Connecticut, O'California. Oh, oh, California. I made us up a new one, didn't I? Oh, oh California, North Carolina, Virginia Beach, North, New York. New York, New York. I'm stuck. My record broke. Washington State, Michigan, South Carolina, Kentucky, Louisiana, and Georgia watching online. So welcome them too. We welcome you. We honor you for watching. We honor you. God bless you for, for joining us tonight. So uh, before I ask you where you're from, I, I know that we have uh, many more people in the room tonight. And I wonder if all of our guest ministry, whether you're a pastor, evangelist, uh, teacher, uh, apostle, whoever you might be, would you stand if you are in full-time ministry? Let us honor our ministers tonight. God bless you. Amen. Yes. Amen. We have, yes, thank you. So we're, we're so honored to have you here. God bless you for being with us. We thank you uh, for joining us. So um, let's see here. Oh, okay, where are you from? Ain't nobody from nowhere. <laughs> Seated in heavenly places, she said. We'll take it, we'll take it, let's honor her, amen. So where are you from? 
California, stand California, let us welcome you. God bless you, Bakersfield, Bakersfield. God bless you, amen, honored to have you. Stand back up, Jackie, stand back up. See this lady right here? She was uh, the producer at 700 Club for 30 years. Just stand right there a minute. Because I like, I like telling this story because you're gonna like it a lot. Uh, if you were in the, uh, in the nations meeting with us today, you heard this. But this precious lady was the first person who really saw value in my husband's ministry when he was, uh, when he was young and up and coming and nobody knew who he was. And she would take him by the hand. He'd come to set, she'd invite him to 700 Club. She'd drag him by the hand and say, here's T.D. Jakes, lay hands on him and prophesy to him. Here, here, and, and my husband's like, I'm just obeying her. I'm just doing, t I'm doing what she's telling me to do. And there's T.D. Jakes, and she's making lay hands on T.D. Jakes and Brother Oral Roberts and all these people. But she believed in Pastor Kent. We love you. We honor you. Thank you so much, Jackie. Jackie Yaki. We honor you so much. Also, uh, volunteers, anybody who has volunteered, for this conference, we have people in the parking lot. We have people uh, making flower arrangements, greeters, prayer partners, ushers, offering takers. If you are volunteering in this conference, would you stand and let us honor you? Wow. Wow. Give them a good hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, okay, are you still shy? Are you still bashful? You gonna tell me where you're from? Illinois, stand Illinois. Let us welcome Illinois. God bless you. All right, who else we got? What, what? Tennessee, okay. I can. <laughs> somebody from South Carolina. Well, North Carolina. All right, I'll take it. North Carolina. We got South Carolina. Where was South Carolina? I meant South Carolina. Amen. You know what this brother told me tonight? He said, right before church, I hugged, I hugged their neck. He said, when you're yelling out states, yell out Georgia. So is there anybody from Georgia in the room? You are. All right. Praise God. Thank you so much. Well, uh, I, I want to bring on our musical guests, but before I do that, I have a pressing need, and I'm not going to tell you his name, but I'm going to tell you that he's eight years old, and he and his mom are watching live from Vanderbilt Hospital, and there's been an attack of the enemy against his life. Incidentally, he got saved here on Sunday. He got saved gave his heart to the Lord. He is the most handsome young man that you could, just fine young man. Gave his heart to Jesus and then has had an unexpected accident. And I'm not gonna, I can't tell you what it is and I'm not gonna mention his name online around the world. But I wonder before we bring on our musical guest, if we could just stand and intercede for this little boy. Would you, the Bible says if we touch, if two touch anything on earth and agree, can you agree with me for perfect healing? Can you agree with me? Can you agree with me that the assault and the assignment of the enemy is destroyed? Is destroyed. The yoke is broken. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we come against this assault, this assignment of hell sent against his body in the name of Jesus. We take authority. Lord, you gave us power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all, come on, over all the power of the devil. And we take authority in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are not surprised by this and you've already made provision for his healing so Lord we declare healing we declare no surgery in the name of Jesus and no residual effect from this we call it done in Jesus name in Jesus name now give the Lord a shout of praise hallelujah 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 now his mother just texted me I was sitting on the platform and she just texted me and she said they came in and did another ultrasound. 
and we'll know in a few moments whether he has to have surgery. So listen, no surgery. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I am excited to introduce our musical uh, guest for the evening. I was there when she made her first sound when she was born, and it was awful. <laughs> and it was off key. And right there in the delivery room, I told her daddy, if she ever gets it on key with that kind of lung power, we might be on to something. And so she has a new CD. The song that we sang, Spirit and the Bride, that we sang tonight was a, a, a composition. Jasmine wrote it's on this CD. But I want you to give a good warm welcome to our daughter, Jasmine Brady. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Somewhere I lost my passion. Somewhere I lost my heart. Somewhere I lost the vision you gave me at the start. I took my eyes off you, Jesus, and I began to see. But I'm here now asking for more of you and less of me singing thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And let
from you, Father, I've strayed. I've sought my own ambition apart from your name. But I'm here now, Lord Jesus, asking for one more chance. I give my life, my love to you, all I am and all I have. Singing thy about a moment, Lord. It's about a change. I can live another day seeking my own thing. So I earnestly pray this prayer today. your prayer tonight. Come on and lift it up to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Awesome prayer. This is what Jesus prayed. Before I introduce our, our speaker tonight, I just wanted to, uh, we forgot to tell you that immediately after church tomorrow, um, Rick and Debbie Massey are going to host a tour of our new building. So, Rick, we're, stand up so they can see you. <clears throat> if you want to take a tour of our new building, it's about 80% done. Uh, these beautiful folks are going to host that tour. Uh, <clears throat> what a wonderful night. It's, um, it's a great thing when the world says God is dead to be able to marshal this kind of congregation hear the sound of praise that goes up and to feel the sovereignty of God and the closeness of the Lord and so um, I've looked forward to this night I've never got to meet Pastor Jensen until a few moments before church and he was everything I thought he'd be <laughs> um, I don't yes <clears throat> authored so many books. Um, what I, I, one of the things I like about him the most is just serve God his whole life. There are no moral failures, no tripping up. He has proven by example that you can live victorious for God. You can survive ministry and pastoring too. Amen. Pastors in Gainesville, Georgia, Free Chapel. Uh, he's known all over the world, written many books. Um,
just a tremendous man of the Lord. And uh, we're honored to have him tonight. I, I tried for two or three years to get him, and I, I finally got you. Amen. And um, we, if there's anybody you need, or need to stand for, it's this Father and the Lord tonight. And we want you to come and take your liberty. We're so happy to have you. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you very much. This, this is incredible. What a, what a Friday night. This is better than the club. Amen. Smile at somebody around you and say, uh, you used not to be in church on Friday night. The Lord must have really done something for you. It's probably more honky-tonks than clubs around here. I don't know. I wouldn't know. As he said, I'm sinless. Amen. I've never, I've never, uh, I want my wife, would you please send that on video to my wife? I want her to hear that. And I am married. I left my wedding ring, so we've been married 36 years, and we're happily married. Thank you. And uh, God bless you. You can be seated. Thank you. It is an honor to be here tonight. And um, I I didn't know Pastor Christmas, but he's got a name you can't you can't forget. It kind of stood out. And um, but I already love his whole family. I love the family. Something about families that touch me when I see uh, the daughter singing and the son up speaking powerful words and the wife, the, no, he wouldn't be worth two cents without you. I don't even know you and I know that. I can, I can perceive, I, I perceive by the spirit that, that he wouldn't be worth a nickel without you. Candy, right? Another memorable name. I mean, I'm not good with names, but I won't ever forget these two. And I, 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 a true confession, I, I don't know why I'm here. I, I don't, I don't, since the pandemic, I have not traveled like something happened to me during the pandemic. And it was a shift in my soul and in my spirit. And uh, I, I was traveling all over the world all the time, and something happened to me. And I so enjoyed being home <laughs> that, that, that I said, Lord, bring the world to me. Amen. And, uh, but I, I still travel, and I speak as the Lord leads me, especially when I can reach uh, pastors and people. And his request kept coming across my desk, and uh, I laid it aside. I laid it on my desk. I could not write uh, no. And not that I'm anything, I'm, I'm nothing. But um, I still don't know why I'm here on a Friday night. Other than I, I love you in the spirit. My mother introduced me to him by video or by a television thing or some YouTube channel or something. But I go eat breakfast with my 88-year-old mother every morning. I take her breakfast that I'm home. And, uh, and she said, I want you to hear this Pentecostal preacher. I said, I thought I was your favorite preacher. She said, no, I like this man now. I want you to hear this preacher. So we can blame it on my mother, I guess, that that if this doesn't go well. But we sat there, and the more that he prophesied, it was a prophecy. And the more that he prophesied, boy, I felt felt something. And I knew and I perceived that this man's powerful. This man is bold. This man is anointed. And I... The more I get to know them, the more I like them. And it's an honor to be here with you tonight. I, uh, I see so many people. I see Aaron Crabb somewhere. I saw him and his precious wife. And man, the, I, I don't know of a greater family in the world than that family right there and those people. And that, I love you. I am so sorry I have not been to your church. I feel like a dirty dog. But I'm coming to your church. I'm coming to your church, I promise. I promise, because I want to. <laughs> and, and, but, boy, that's an anointed vessel right there. And so many, but he and his wife, I don't know which one preaches better. They just are tag team. I, I can't imagine the power. 
And then I saw Nancy Alcorn and uh, what a worldwide p- powerful ministry. And, and then, and then, and then it, I really got freaked out because the Isaacs are here somewhere. And I mean, I like that upright bass. I like that. I'm a, I majored in music in college. I love all, and you know, if it's good music, I don't care what style it is. I like, they, these people are professional, but anointed, anointed professionals. Very rare, very rare and, and, and unbelievable. So I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Lord, speak to us tonight. Hallelujah. Just feel the presence of the Lord here tonight. Feel a peace tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have your Bibles, I want to go to the book of Exodus chapter 8 for just a few moments. Now, you don't know me, young piano player, but get you a clock and, and, and start a countdown. When I start reading my verse, start a countdown and give it 30 minutes and then come back to the keyboard. All right? I didn't say play. I just said come back to the keyboard. No, I'm kidding. I want you to come back and play or I won't know when to stop. And I'm so used to that, so I need that. And I may stop and I may not, but, but I, I won't preach long tonight. Exodus chapter 8. Let's go there. Exodus chapter 8. If you've got it, say amen. amen. Exodus 8, I'll begin reading with verse 20. And the Lord said to Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he comes forth to the water and say unto him, thus saith the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Else, if you will not let my people go, I will send swarms of flies upon them and upon their servants, upon their people, swarms into their homes, their houses. The houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground where they are on. Can you imagine? Swarms full, houses full, the ground everywhere you walk. Have you ever been to the beach in California where we have a campus? I go to the beach a lot of times. I'm a runner. And the the seaweed will wash up. And if you run on that Seaweed, swarms of flies will come up. It's a nasty. If you're breathing hard, you're, you're going to be like Jesus. I took him in and, 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 and didn't mean to. Uh, but it's amazing. And I, listen to this now. Swarms of flies on the ground wherever they are. And I will sever in that day or draw a line in that day in the land of Goshen. In which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. To the end thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst. And so I'll stop reading there, but I want to talk about this fourth plague for a few moments, and I want to I want to just give you what the Lord stirred up in me while. I was in this place, and it's for people under the sound of my voice and people listening to me wherever you're hearing this, that God says over your life, over your ministry, and over God's divine purpose for your life, no more flies. No more flies. God knows how to turn it around quick. God knows how to say to the enemy, that's far enough, enough is enough. And he knows how to make it happen. God can turn it around suddenly. When he said, let my people go, and Pharaoh didn't do it, God began to send plague after plague. But what I want you to see for a few moments is the swarms of flies in this fourth plague and what they represent. In that day, God said, I will draw a line, I will sever my people from the Egyptians. And even though their neighborhoods may come and homes may come right up against each other, 
I'm going to draw a line around the land of Goshen where my people are. And there will be flies all over the Egyptians and their houses. But my people will be sitting under a tree in the shade, sipping sweet tea, and not have a bug around them anywhere because I've drawn the line and I've said no more flies. God decreed a no-fly zone over their homes, over their families, over their children, over their lives. And this is so significant because a lot of people don't know this, but concerning the 10 plagues, the first three plagues, not only did the Egyptians go through it, the, when the blood turned to water, it wasn't like God had drawn the line. Their, blood, their water turned to blood also. And when the frogs filled the land and frogs were everywhere, it was in the Israelites' home and in their bed and in, on their table and everywhere just like the Egyptians. They suffered just like them. And the third plague, lice, covered the earth, the Bible said. Everywhere they turned, babies, everybody tormented. It wasn't just the Egyptians. God's people suffered. Why? I, I think about what we've been through, the pandemic. It wasn't like we got a break. We lost people we loved. We went through pain. I personally, my family personally went through the greatest trial we have ever gone through as a family in 2019, 2020, 2021 was like nightmare season for my life. The ministry doing amazing. Family going through things that almost, I almost, I know what it is to feel like I can't do this anymore. Why does God let his children suffer just like the world suffers? There is a verse you must not miss in this story of Exodus. And it's in Exodus, and keep me up just a little bit like you had me when I first came up, because I'll pull the mic back a little, but just keep me right where you got me. You're doing amazing, Sal, man. Exodus 12 and verse 38 says, and I, I'd never seen this. I don't know why I didn't get this. It's, I feel embarrassed. It's so simple. That when they did come out by the blood of the Lamb, they came out, quote, a mixed multitude. Which means there were Egyptians who were converted. And how were they converted? They watched the Israelites go through the same suffering, the same loss, the same pain, the same tears, but they had something in their suffering that they did not have. These people have a hope we don't have. They have a faith we don't have. They have a boldness that we don't have, an assurity that we don't have. And the first three plagues all went through because God said after that, I'm going to draw a line. He puts everybody through the first plagues. Christians are, they weren't Christians yet, but they were, they were God's people. They were Israelites, covenant people. Went through the same thing that the Egyptians went through. And God said, I can draw the line. Well, God, if you could draw the line, why don't you draw the line? Why are you letting us suffer? Why are you not coming through? Why are you not stopping this disaster? Why are you not stopping this invasion of pain in my life? It's because the mixed multitude of Egyptians were converted when God created a contrast between how people of the covenant suffer and how people of the Egypt, Egypt, the type of the world, people in the world without God suffer. And I want to ask you a question. 
The Egyptians, some of them, watched those people worship God through their darkest hours. And they said, I want some of that. I don't understand it, but I want it. How are you suffering if your miracle hasn't come yet? Let's get real for a minute. I love miracles. I believe in miracles. I stand for miracles. I'm not ashamed of the power of the Holy Ghost. But I've also learned that there are some things that we go through. I don't care if you pay your tithes or not. I don't care if you come to church. I don't care if you live a life and try to do the best you can. You will in this life suffer and go through pain and loss that is almost indescribable. I'm sorry you don't want to hear that. But in this life you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. See, that's the difference. Something in their suffering touched those Egyptians and those Egyptians said, I want what those people have got. Ask yourself this question, has what I suffered made any Egyptians convert? Has what I've been through. See, we're not supposed to suffer like the world suffers. When the world goes through hard times, they get drunk. When the world goes through hard times, they have an affair. When the world goes through hard times, they give up and quit and and live like hell. But when a real Christian goes through suffering... They do like Job, the Lord gives at the grave site. The Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Egyptians watch that. And when we, when we go through things like Job went through, it's because God is allowing Egyptians to watch believers suffer sometimes to see how real what we have is, how powerful it is that God doesn't have to just be the God of the mountains, but he's the God of the valleys. He's the God when tears are streaming down my face. I still believe the greatest act of faith is not just to get a miracle, but it's when you have a question mark for a brain and you don't have any answers and you stand flat footed and say, I still believe my son's going to be saved. I still believe devils are going to leave my house. I still believe somehow, some way, all things are working together for the good to them that are called according to his purpose. Give him a shout if you know how to suffer. Don't be afraid of that word. child of God suffers differently than an Egyptian. That's why in Acts 16, when Paul and Silas were in prison and their backs were lacerated and they were in chains, at midnight, midnight is the darkest hour. They didn't have a pity party. Because when you have one, nobody wants to come except the devil. Oh, come on here. Look like a cover girl for the book of Lamentations because you're going through a trial. You need to put a smile on your face, throw up your hands, and say, this is still the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice, and I will be glad in it. He's still good. I'm still saved. His word is still true. The victory's on the way, and I'll believe it. I don't care what I see. I walk by faith, not by sight. Everybody take a praise break and give the Lord a shout. And the Bible said when they started singing praises in their dark suffering hour, he didn't keep them from the lashes. He didn't keep them from the beating. But when they were, they should have been whining. Sometimes I want to say with Christians, would you like some cheese with your wine? (laughs) Winos. Hallelujah. 
That's when we ought to sing like we've never sung. That's when I learned during those three years to grab my Bible, whether I feel it or I don't feel it, and walk up to that pulpit and open it up, and even though I've seen the opposite, just stand flat-footed and decree what the book says. And God says, now you're getting something. Now you're going deep. Now you're ready for miracles like you've never seen. And God has turned my family battle into victory after victory. And I'm telling you, woo, he's gonna do it for somebody under the sound of my voice. Turn to somebody and say, no more flies. The Bible said that Jesus was reviled here it is, but he reviled not back. We are being watched when we're suffering. We're living epistles. They may never read this book, but you are a living epistle and they'll read your life. And I found out when my family went through some things that, that we never thought we would walk through, I found out that people out in the world that I pastor, they began to understand and appreciate me more and listen to my messages more because of the suffering we had walked through, the things that were out of our control. It was dark, demonic. Demonic. But I don't have a sad story tonight. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He knew me and I loved him. And now all my love is due him, I guess. I don't remember it. It's been so long. Plunged me to victory. Woo! He plunged me to victory. Say that word, shout it, victory. victory. Beneath that cleansing flood. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, uh, People watch you when you're going through something and been lied on. Can't even defend yourself. You just kind of sit back. And let it happen. Live in the freedom of forgiveness. This is so simple. I apologize. But an attitude shift has to happen before God takes you into Goshen where he draws the line. Forgiveness needs to gush out of us. Just let it gush out of you. Get over the bitterness. Get over the hurt. And let forgiveness just gush out of you and you'll step out of the plague into a place called Goshen and God will draw the line and declare a no. You know what flies represent? They represent death. They represent devastation. They represent decay. Your fruit is dying. You'll find flies on the dead fruit. If, if an animal is dead out in the country, somewhere in the, in the woods, you'll find flies. It represents death, the end of something. It's over. But when you step out of a bitterness into forgiveness, then suddenly God draws the line and he says, this is a no-fly zone on that family, on that that home, on that business, on that church, on that ministry, no, turn to somebody and say, shoe fly. Don't bother me. Have you suffered in a way that wins souls or embitters people? You don't fall out of love, you fall out of forgiveness. Relationships are sustained and families are sustained by forgiveness. Suffer differently. I may have been through it, 
Hallelujah. My soul rejoices right now. I might have been through it. And I don't preach a sad thing. I don't know why I'm preaching a sermon tonight. God told me to. But when I think about what I've been through and what we've been through, I can't help but think about I don't look like what I've been through. I might have been through the fiery furnace, but I don't have the smell of smoke all over me of what I've walked through. It's not in my conversation when you talk to me. I'm pitiful. I'm poor. It's none of that. It's I can't wait to see what God's going to do. He somehow is going to use even the attacks of Satan to bring great glory to his name. I know my Redeemer lives tonight. Tell somebody you don't look like what you've been through. And you don't smell like it either. You're not going to tell by the look on my face. You're not going to tell by my conversation. You're not going to hear it, and you're not going to smell it on me. I'm not going to be bitter. I'm not going to be ugly. I'm not going to be uh, pessimistic and, and, and mad and, and, and you know, kind of, well, I don't much believe in miracles because I, I believe in them more than I've ever believed in them. Hallelujah. Because if he could see us through what he saw us through, I watched God draw the line and say, no more. I watched that phone ring, and I watched my children say, I'm coming home home daddy I've been set free I've been delivered put your hand up to your ear and say that call is coming that breakthrough that building that property that money though no more flies no more flies on your dream no more flies on your vision no more flies Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you still plugged into pity? You're not ready yet. You can't have pity and power at the same time. So let the bitterness go. Let the grudge go. A scab is something that tries to heal a wound. A scab is a, and a scar is a testimony that says, I left it alone enough to let it heal. And there's some of you who should have been healed three years ago of what happened to you. But you keep digging the scab off and tearing the scab off. And, and if it's not you, it's somebody else digging it back up. And the Lord sent me to tell you he's decreeing a no-fly zone because the enemy loves to lay his eggs. That Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, loves for you to keep scraping off that offense until it's bleeding some more and he can get his eggs in that. Things God spoke to you. The Lord says it's a no-fly zone coming tonight. You're in the right place at the right time for the right message and the right anointing. And I told the Lord, if I get through this, hell's going to pay one day. And I'm on the other side of it. And I can tell you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house shout shout on a demon's head right now everybody in this room shout like you believe there's a no fly zone over your house he said no more flies in your house no divorce no death 
no devastation, no more decay of your dreams and your hopes and your aspirations. And I'm preaching to some pastors in this room. I love that verse, Pastor Kent, that the Apostle Paul says, you know, there were times, I'm sure, when he was being beaten. He, he was beat three times with 39 stripes. Three times. Three times he was beaten with 39 stripes each time. He was beaten with rods. We act like nothing ever is going to happen to us because I'm walking in faith. Well, you don't know what you're walking in until you get in something so deep. You don't know what in the world, how did I get here? You've never been so confused when you know where you're going, but you don't understand where you are. And the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians said this powerful statement. I feel it for some pastors in this room. I'm sure there was a time when he wondered, when he hoped so, when he was believing, when he was trying so hard. But then there came that moment after one of those beatings. And I don't know which one was where the line was drawn in the no-fly zone. He felt he knew it. He knew the atmosphere had changed. I know it happened to me as a pastor. I know God will do it for you if you'll hold on. Have y'all ever heard my song called Hold On? It should have won a Grammy. Here's the first verse. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Second verse. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's the bridge. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everybody, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Paul said, listen to these powerful words. I'm almost done. I will come to vision. I don't hope so. God gave me a vision decades ago. I've been through all kinds of suffering, but then he reached a point where he said, I absolutely will come to vision. He knew that the season had changed. And the Lord said that he's decreeing a no-fly zone. Why did he start with flies? Why didn't he do it on the lice? Why didn't he do it on the frogs? Because flies represent death, and decomposition. And he said, no more death, no more wondering, no more hope so. You are going to get it. It is going to happen. God is going to break through. You are going to get that phone call. You are going to see God do everything He showed you in the original vision. Just because you've walked through a lot of suffering, don't you hold on. Just hold on. Don't quit. Hold on. Turn to somebody and say, there's no death here. We're in Goshen. There's life. It's a no-fly zone over your dreams. Somebody shout over that. A no-fly zone over. None of them can't land. They, they're, they're not attracted. They're staying over there with the people who are still whining and in bitterness and unforgiveness. A no-fly zone over the promises and the vision that God has given you. It's a no-fly zone over this church. Over that building project. Every seat, a no-fly zone will be filled in the name of Jesus. It won't be big enough. You'll have to do more and more and more. It's a no-fly zone over your families, over your children, 
I don't care what the enemy told you. I don't care what demon thinks it's got them. The Lord says it's a no-fly zone because some granny got on her knees and fasted and prayed and pleaded the blood of Jesus. And now God says, I'll back it up. I'll draw the line. Everybody shout, we're in Goshen now. Has it not been 30 minutes? Well, I'll, keep, I'll take it. It's no problem. I feel like the Lord is saying we're in Goshen now. There's life here. There's joy here. There's peace here. I will come to vision. Pastors, looking back on my life, I'm 61 years old now. I've pastored the same church, the only church I've ever pastored for 33 years. And looking back on my life, if there was one thing I, I would say to young preachers, it would be, I wish I would have relaxed more. I wish I would have really trusted God more. Because I, I, I really, I really, really, really thought that it was mostly my effort that I was not doing enough, doing enough, doing enough. And I'm telling you, if God's giving you that vision, you work, you put your family first, and, or God first in your family, take care of your family. But I'm telling you, you will come to vision. You will come to vision. Shout, I will come to vision. Have you got a vision for your children to be saved? You will come to vision. Have you got a vision for this season to change? You will come to vision. No more flies. No fly zone. I want you to walk through your house when you get home. Throw up your hands and say, this is a no fly zone. My children are going to dream dreams and see visions. Your church is going to explode. We're in the last days. The signs of the times are everywhere. It's the most exciting time in the world to be alive. And right now, as Iran is about to supposedly launch and attack Israel, we're right in the book of Ezekiel and all of this. And right in the middle of it, God says, I'm going to decree and in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit on your sons and your daughters. I'm going to visit my church. I'm going to decree. And I believe that COVID has gotten the real remnant church so hungry for revival and a move of God. We don't want just better buildings. We don't care. We want a move of God. We're in Goshen. The Bible said Jesus showed himself alive when he rose from the dead. It's time to show yourself alive. Come out of that depression. No more, no fly zone over depression. No fly zone over fear and anxiety and panic attacks. No fly zone. Come out of it. In the name of Jesus. Come out of that grieving. No flies here. Come out of that worry. We're taking back our sons and daughters. We're taking back our visions and our dreams. We're taking back our anointing and our peace and our enthusiasm. It's over. No flies here. No flies here. If you receive it, throw your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. Worship him just a moment. Give him your personal worship. Just take, just take three minutes. I don't want a keyboard to, to, to play for you. I, you keep playing. But I, he's not playing for you. He's worshiping for himself the next three minutes. I want you to worship the Lord right in the middle of suffering and pain and what the enemy whispers. It's dying. It's dying. It's not growing. It's dying. Devastate. No flies. 
And for every family that leaves you, God will send seven to replace them. You receive that? The enemy told me when I stood for what was right, we lost hundreds and hundreds of people. (laughs) This is the craziest story. And I I preach the gospel. I don't preach Donald Trump. I don't preach none of that. I preach Jesus. I don't get in the pulpit and talk about politics. But I preach the Word of God. I'm pro-life, pro-Israel, pro-religious freedom, pro-Ten Commandments, pro-male and female, pro-Easter is not trans day, it's resurrection day. I preach like this. This is just what I do. I, I'm never going to stop doing that. And I found out a long time ago that man is not my source. And I had hundreds and hundreds leave. And in the middle of it, it's like it was front after front after front of the enemy attacking, saying, give up, give up, give up. And one day I got so mad at the devil in my prayer place, I walk in the woods and I pray in the Holy Ghost and me and the squirrels and, 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 walk, and walk, walk through the woods and pray. And I got trees out there that I've cut. I t- carry a knife with me in case I run into a bear. And I don't know what I would do. But, but, but I, 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 cut, I cut up trees to mark them. as when, And I can take you to that place and I can show you trees that I cut up and what they represented in the trial that I thought I would not get through. And now when I walk through, I look at that mark and I say, great is, she sung it, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Can I tell you a quick story and I'll be done. So, so all this was going on and it's crazy. It was crazy. And I didn't know he was going to do it. I didn't know. He didn't tell me. The White House didn't call me and tell me. But Donald Trump tweeted out. I was on an airplane flying from Orange County to Georgia. It was a a Friday night late flight. And I was flying back and I did not have my phone on. I had fallen asleep. And when I landed... And I turned my phone on. My phone said, ding, 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 ding. It was messages. And Donald Trump had, had tweeted, this coming Sunday, I'm going to watch Jensen Franklin on, on so and so, wherever they get it online. And, and this is not political, so relax. But my God, are we not at a point where it's beyond left and right wing can somebody say let's just say the bible says the bible says the bible says he made the male and female at what point when we're cutting up children and cutting girls breast off and and and, and messing up their whole structure that Sunday, that Sunday, Aaron, we had 1.2 million people online tune in. They had to, they brought, thank God the White House warned us. They did call us and warn us that we're sending some people in and they're going to help you with your bandwidth or whatever you call it because you're probably going to have a big deal. And he had never done this before. And 1.2, mostly heathens, 1.2 million, because you know Donald Trump, he, he doesn't have Holy Ghost filled people, you know, just. <laughs> family was watching. That family started being online members. And they started blessing us and they started sending millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's, we owe no man nothing on anything that we have. 
And you know what they told me? They said, we had never heard of you. Really hurt my ego. We never heard of you, never seen you. We don't watch Christian TV. We had never heard of you. But when he said he wanted to watch you, we said, we want to see what kind of preacher he wants to listen to. And that's the only reason. God drew a line and said the enemy meant it for your evil. Our church is full. We had 37,000 people for Easter services. To God be the glory. I want to kick the devil in his fangs and say to God be the glory. No fly zone. Tell somebody it's not dying. Stand to your feet. One more story. Can I tell you one more story? Y'all making me feel good now. There was a couple in the, in the hills of California, the mountains of California, mountain country. And this is a true story. And they had gone out, and this was an article, newspaper article, and they, they had mushrooms in a, in a valley behind their home, subdivision, and they went out and picked these mushrooms and they had them so, they did, they did this every year and they picked them and they brought them back and they invited several of their neighbors, several of the homes and their friends in the neighborhood to come over and it's not that kind of mushroom, it's, it's, the, it's, it's real mushrooms and they had, uh, they, they had uh, mushroom casseroles and they had so many mushrooms. They had, uh, the article said uh, mushroom casseroles and uh, uh, eggs with mushrooms and all kind and anything you can imagine. Just like a huge deal and a big party and all their friends were eating and 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 after they ate this delicious meal with several family families there or adults there they uh they took the scraps and just happened to put it on a plate and the guy walked in his kitchen and 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 he saw his cat sitting down there and he set the some of the scraps left over for the cat and the cat was just tearing it all to pieces and eating those mushrooms and he walked back out and they were having a good time and he came back into the kitchen just to just to put something up and uh, a few minutes later the cat was laying over there almost behind the, the refrigerator and 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 he his tongue was hanging out her tongue was hanging out and, and she was not moving barely breathing swollen stomach and he called the vet. It's what the article said. He called the vet and said, what's going on? Do you think that cats are allergic to mushrooms or whatever? He said, I think, the vet said, I think what you've done is you picked uh, toadstools, which is, uh, you know, they look just like mushrooms, but they're extremely poisonous. And he said, what you have to do is you have to immediately, you and all your guests go to the emergency room and have your stomachs pumped. This is a true story. All of them immediately, about six couples, went to the emergency room, had their, for five hours, had their stomachs pumped, came home, all of them sick. They all went to their house. I, they probably never went back to dinner there. And, and, and they, they came in, came in, and the guy, his poor wife, she just went in the bed and collapsed, and he's just trying to lock up. And he walks in the kitchen he's thinking I need to move that corpse out of my kitchen and he's laying and the kitten the cat is laying there and it's got six kittens what he thought was death pains was birth pains and some of you you thought it was over but the Lord said that's not death pains I'm about to give birth to your biggest miracle. I'm about to decree the line is drawn. And what I bless, Satan can't curse. Now shout if you believe it. Hallelujah. Thanks be unto God who always gives us the victory in every place. Now who am I preaching to tonight? How many of you have been through the fire? and been through the flood. But the scripture said, and then he brought us to our wealthy place. How many of you bear witness that you, tonight, it's time for God to decree no more flies. 
over your children, over your home, over your family. If that's you, get out of your seat and get down here. Over your ministry, whatever the Lord's stirring up in you, don't come just to come, but if He's drawing you on you, somebody's on your mind, the enemy's got the flies all around them, circling all around them, you can get down here and you can affect that situation. I love when Candy prayed for that little boy, that eight-year-old boy. That touched my heart because I got a report before I got in here tonight of, of, of a family that I love very much that's going through something very similar in the hospital, exact kind of situation. And I don't even know the situation. And that's what really what switched my spirit to preach this sermon. A no-fly zone. No. No more. No more decay. No more decomposition. No more. No more wasting away. Throw your hands up and give it all to God. Quit worrying about it. Release forgiveness. Step over into Goshen. Let, let forgiveness gush out of you. Release the offense. Release it. You say, but you don't know what. I don't care. Put on the overcoat of love. Just right now, just put the overcoat of love on and say, I just let it go. God, I trust you. God's drawing the line. That God's drawing the line. Just praise Him. Just begin to worship Him. Just begin to glorify Him. Just begin to thank Him. I want somebody to claim a son on drugs. A daughter who an alcoholic. I want you to lift your hands right now and just say, God, set them free. No more flies over their life. In Jesus' name, over every ministry represented here tonight, pastors and pastors' wives, lift your hands high. I want to see who you are. Lift them high and unashamed. We just decree in the name of Jesus. No fly zones over that church. God, it's time for those altars to fill. It's time for a move of God. It's time for new people. Just like God brought the animals on the ark, two by two. New couples, new families. Here they come. From the north, give up. From the south, give up. From the east, give up. From the west, give up. It come forth in the name of Jesus. Just raise your hands and decree. No fly zone over your altars, over your pulpit, over your offerings. No fly zones thinking that it doesn't matter what the economy does. God's going to bless His people. I'll do one more thing and the pastor's going to come. But with every head bowed and every eye closed. You'd say, Pastor Franklin, I'm a backslider. I don't know why I'm in church tonight. I didn't intend to come, but here I am. Well, me either. Isn't that a coincidence? But God brought you here. Something, an addiction is, is, is decaying your life and the flies have gathered and said it's over. But it's not over because God sent you here tonight. Pastor, you're preaching to me. I need to get right with God tonight. If that's you, boldly raise your hand as high as you can get it right where you're standing, all over this room. Wonderful, wonderful. Raise them high and unashamed. Keep your hand high. Keep it high. Keep it high. Yes, yes, yes. Keep it high. If you see anyone around you with their hand raised, gently lay your hand on their shoulder. Gently just lay your hand on their shoulder and begin to pray. And everybody pray this prayer out loud. Say, Jesus, I receive you. As my Lord and Savior, I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has drawn a line and I'm stepping over into Goshen. I receive your peace. I receive your joy. I receive your forgiveness. I release everybody from the prison of my heart that has hurt me. I release that unforgiveness. I let go of all pity. I choose power over pity. And I receive tonight that no fly zone. God says no more flies. I am alive and I'm going to show myself alive. Now praise Him one more time in this house. Praise Him. Come on and sing and worship the Lord just a minute if you want to. 
Would you reach over and pray for somebody just another minute? I don't know how y'all do it around here, but just minister to somebody. The presence of the Lord is still here. This is how I fight my battles. Sing it, church. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Sing it, church. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I... I can say is thank God he still has preachers in America. Amen. Hallelujah. That, Pastor Franklin, thank you so much uh, for the word of the Lord. Um, I was just, there's nothing to say except I know this, the life expectancy of a mayfly is 24 hours. Right. So whatever's flying over you is fixing to drop dead anyway. Hallelujah. 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 I pray God loose the anointing on you in the name of the Lord. God put hope back in your spirit. Hallelujah. Now, God, we receive the word of the Lord tonight. We receive it in the name of Jesus. Oh, I praise you, Lord. I praise you. I praise you. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for the deposit made in this house. Amen. 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 Well, tomorrow morning, uh, again, we're going to have a tremendous service with Dr. Hans Hess. I've known him for, I guess, 30 years at least. And um, a tremendous preacher. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And on behalf of our church and our conference, we want to say uh, thank you for breaking your rule and not traveling. Amen. Amen. And, uh, if you ever feel led to come this way next year to our conference, you have an open invitation. Hallelujah. Praise God. So as we always do at the end of every service, you can go back to your seats. But uh, if you want to sow into uh, Pastor Franklin's ministry, every dime that comes in tonight, I promise you we will give to him. You can lay it on the altar. And I'm going to let you go home. And we're going to be back at 10 in the morning. We're going to have a tremendous time with the Lord. God bless you. Huh? Oh, yeah. We have Judy Jacobs tomorrow, too. And... Uh, She's going to sing the house down. So we're trying to give you your money's worth. Oh, I forgot. It's free. <clears throat> Amen. So anyway, God bless you. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you in the morning.